I get asked a lot about scale, both by um, companies that want help as well as by um, people who are interested in how they can do it. And that, of course, is, you know, brings up the question of what is scale? Often what it is is I'm working with an organization and they say, well, we have 800 people developing this product. Um, we want to scale Scrum so all 800 will be using Scrum and it will all work together. And I, I asked them, so why all 800? Do you need 800? They said, well, I don't know. We're using 800 now and we can't just lay them off. So we have to somehow come up with a mechanism for engaging them all in the Scrum framework um, to deliver our product. I'm like, wow, well, that's interesting. That's a problem and a solution, and I'm not sure if the two of them fit. So a lot of companies, um, one was an a, a insurance company in, in Switzerland, um, they had two or three teams that were just very, very delighted with how they were using Scrum and delivering value to their customers and great relations and enjoyed coming to work. And they asked me, they said, um, can you help us craft a, a, a message to management so management will get behind this and, and we can use this throughout our organization? And I was thinking, like, geez, you know, that would really maybe even ruin what you're doing because suddenly you're taking something that's very successful and you're trying to turn it into a very large organizational, political, um, value-driven, philosophical thing. And often that's what scaling does. So scaling, um, I've come to think of it as meaning we see value in using Scrum in a single team. We even see value in using um, Scrum on two or three teams. We love iterative incremental. We love delivering um, frequently. We love the transparency. We now want to do that big. And so we have um, a product that we're, um, maybe it has eight major features in and we have 300 people um, working on it. Show us how we can take that model of the single scrum team and expand it to that. And I'll tell you, it's enough to take um, even Stephen Hawking and the theory of everything and drive you crazy because you take a, a product um, that has 300 people working on it that's been like seven years old, and it's probably got an architecture, a data structure, it's got a user interface, it's got um, features and functions, it's got dependencies, it's got people with skills here and people with skills there and people, and it is a miracle that they get out of release at all anyway. And now we're gonna try breaking it down to small atomic units of scrum teams. So what we've done across time is, is one come to the conclusion that this idea of, of um, scaling scrum teams to a larger um, endeavor is dependent upon your ability to reduce the dependencies between the teams. If teams are constantly thinking about what the other teams are doing or what the architecture team is doing, and everything they do is dependent upon what someone else is doing, they can make no progress, or worse, they make progress that has to be <coughs> pulled back because it's caused problems. So we've, we've come to the conclusion that reducing the dependencies in the way you structure the product backlog, reducing dependencies in domain knowledge or technical knowledge between the people on the teams, and reducing domain knowledge of the actual software itself. So when you go into change, let's say some functionality in software, you're not affecting every other part of the software um, is critical to successful scaling. And by scaling, what I'm, what I'm thinking of is as you go from one to four teams, you want to increase your productivity, let's say up to maybe at least a three times greater. Um, the dreamers might think four times greater but if you don't reduce those dependencies, you're not going to get an increase in productivity. And actually a measure of your the, um, degree to which you reduce the dependencies between the team's product backlog and software is the um, degree of um, productivity or velocity that you're able to deliver. 
So we've, we've structured an, an Uber Scrum. So it's Scrum model, you know, the, the Scrum guy, except it um, now he has artifacts and roles and um, some events that support a larger number of Scrum teams interoperating. And it's got some practices in it about those, those teams um, working their product backlogs to reduce the dependencies, changing the team members so that they uh, have more cohesion and less coupling, and working the software so the technical debt doesn't kill them as they trip over each other in the software itself. And this is, um, those of you that have read The Goal by, by um, Goldratt or read The Phoenix Project will understand that this is a, a set of prescriptions of how to do very hard work of, of taking a large number of people and making them effective and efficient, especially in the Scrum context where every bit of inefficiency is glaringly obvious. So anyway, we've, we've um, developed this and um, it's called Scaled Professional Scrum. Um, it is not a solution. It is a framework within which you can think and apply practices and principles to scale Scrum to be as productive as possible. Those of you that want solutions, um, I suggest you look elsewhere. Those of you that want um, a framework within which to do hard work guided by expert thinking, um, we may have something that can help you. So, talk to you later.